Well, welcome, Family Church. We're so glad you're joining us wherever you happen to be and so excited to be worshiping together with you, our great, great God. We just want to take a moment to thank you. Thank you for your goodness to us and your love for us. Thank you for the great things that we can read about that you did ages ago, Lord, and we look forward to the ages coming and the good things you are going to do, Lord. We do believe that they are coming, that you will do good things, that you will do great things. And I pray that that prompt a response in us, Lord, that we would be so full of your perfect 
goodness and love that we would be overflowing to those around us and making this world a brighter place because of the light that you provide in us. We just thank you so much, God, for your faithfulness.
God is so good, so, so good. You know, his goodness is all around us right here, right now. I know sometimes for me, when I can't feel his goodness, it's because of something I'm holding on to. Whether it's a mountain that I'm facing, a challenge in my life. So I, as we sing this next song, just be thinking about that. Thinking, thinking about that challenge in your life that you could be able to let go so that you can rest in his hands.
doubts and fears don't scare you. You're bigger than I thought you were. You're bigger than I thought. So I stop on the negotiations with the God of all creation. You're bigger than I thought you were. 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 to him, submit it to him so that you can rest easy in his hands, so that you can experience the goodness of him. Just leave it, leave it for him. He's got you. Good morning and welcome to our online campus. So glad that you're tuning in. I wanna share with you a few announcements here at Family Church so you know what's going on and you can get involved if you feel led to. Now, before I start the announcements here, I just wanna share with you the best way for you to be able to connect at our church and that is to be able to fill out your connect card, which there's a link in the chat for you to be able to do so. This is a way for you to connect 
Let us know if you have any prayer requests so that our prayer team and myself, we can be praying for you and whatever's going on in your life. This is just a really great way for us to be able to connect. So I want you to fill out your connect card. That's very important, okay? For our announcements. We are very excited with this month because we are celebrating Pastor Paul's retirement, and this is going to be on June 25th. So if you want more information on how to be able to attend this event that is going to be held at our Sutherland campus, visit our events page at familychurchweb.com fc now. Next, we are having an Illuminate at the Park for our Green Campus. Now, this is great. Even if you aren't attending the Green Campus location, you can come and join us for an evening and night of worship. And this is going to be in Winston at the Riverbend Park, which is going to be very great. So if you have anyone, any loved ones that would love to be able to join you that aren't necessarily a part of Family Church, we'd love for you to invite them so that we can all just have fellowship with one another while we worship. The next thing that I want to share with you is for all of you ladies, there are a lot of events going on within our FC Women's Ministry during this summer. So if you want to know more and get involved, I'm going to actually have the links of their Instagram page and their Facebook page so that you can follow them on both platforms, okay, online here. And that's the best way to be able to connect. And if you want to know more information as well, you can reach out to Carrie Winst. Her email is going to be on the screen here too, so you can get in touch with her. But let me know if you have any questions and I'd love to be able to help you out in the best way that I can. The last thing that I wanna share with you is an easy way to be able to disciple others online or just help them in their journey. This is an opportunity for you to have God really work through you to open up conversations within your friend circle here online. This is a really great, easy way. So all you have to do is just simply like this video, so give it a thumbs up, and then share it to your page. When you share it to your page, you know if people are interested, they'll reach out to you, they'll comment, they'll like, and that's a really easy way to just open up conversations about your faith and your walk, your own journey, because your own journey, your testimony to walking with the Lord is an easy way to open up conversation with other people and let them know about the breakthroughs that you've experienced in your spiritual journey. So you can do that to be able to help disciple others and open up conversations. So I just wanna share that with you because that's a really easy way to do that online. I hope this helps get you plugged in here online. And as always, I'm here for you to help you in the best way that I can with whatever you're going through with your spiritual journey to help you find and follow Jesus and help others find and follow Jesus. Before we hop into our message, we're going to share with you a goodness of God video, this series that we have for different staff and people involved at Family Church here to share with you their testimony and how God has worked in their life. So enjoy and look forward to connecting with you more. There is no one like you, there is none beside you, open up my eyes in wonder. The story we're celebrating this weekend is God's goodness in the life of Craig Hall. And he and his wife Jennifer have uh, been on staff here at uh, Family Church for a while now, but the story wasn't always that way, and we want to take you back to see how God has been at work. I have to tell you, it was 1998, and uh, we were living across the street, and uh, there were some people that moved in across, and we'd seen them start moving their stuff in the house, and uh, we came home from Christmas Eve service, and they started pelting us with snowballs, and uh, it was the beginning of a fun relationship of just connecting back and forth across the street and getting to know each other. Talk about how God called you through all of those things to himself. Yeah, there, there's so much to the story. And I think that the concept of the goodness of God was that, that God provided a house we could afford in, in a community of people that, that were close to God. And then, of course, this wonderful, rare opportunity that I actually get to build a relationship with this pastor at a church. And really, God was moving powerfully at that time. I really came to faith during that time. Early, uh, late, latter part of 1998, we were, Jennifer was pregnant with our first son and, and we were going to lose him, we thought, and, and it was, I had been attending family church, but God really called me just, that was a moment I just said yes. I said yes to God. That was a surrender moment. Yeah, it was a big surrender moment. And from there, just, just launch forward in time. 
at a very rapid pace. I was teaching school at the time, third grade, eventually sixth grade. Uh, I was serving at the church in children's ministry. I was serving behind the scenes, setting up and tearing down. Um, but ultimately, there became positions available. And I, for some reason, I would apply for like a children's pastor position. And I would run away from that. And, <laughs> and then I applied for a youth position. I ran away from that. And, and honestly, I would watch you guys come back from Mexico. And I thought, you guys are crazy. And then I go to Mexico. <laughs> and I come back and, and, and I applied for the youth pastor position. That was 2010. So, you know, almost 12 years had passed of you and I building relationship and God working. And then here I was. I was now, I left teaching and surrendered to this idea to be on staff as a, as a youth pastor. And, and so this was an exciting time because uh, God was clearly working to bring Craig. He was a diligent student and he worked on a lot of things. But coming on to the pastor, taking a pay cut to do that was a big step. And in that process, you've served as a youth pastor, you've worked with children, you've been in mission stuff. Um, you've been in a lot of different things. And now God is calling you to a new transition. How are you feeling about family church moving forward? Yeah, I mean, if I sat here and Ted and told you I'm in complete confidence and I've got it all figured out, it'd be a lie. I'm, I'm as nervous as I was the day I stepped in as a youth pastor because I really believe that it is God who is doing this. And I have to depend on him. And I'm nervous about things. I, I don't want to mess something up. I don't want to be that guy who comes in and like did the best job at shrinking the body of Christ. <laughs> I don't want that for my for my placard, Amazing. right? Yeah. yeah, but but I just trust God through the process. I'm excited. I mean, I, yeah, I lead worship occasionally. I can do some speaking. I, I'm kind of just, I'm, God has gifted me to do a lot of things in a decent way. I'm not fantastic at a lot of things. But I love that I can be used in a lot of ways. So, so I'm excited about the transition. Um, I'm excited to see the team of young leaders. And Craig's got so many talents as, as the campus pastor here at Sutherland. Uh, he's a great administrator and leader. And to watch the rest of the team as they come together, I have such exciting hopes for what God is going to do in the future. But I encourage you to watch the longer online version um, to see more of Craig's story and how God made these transitions. But God is at work, and He is going to do amazing things in the future. So I've heard it said that living the Christian life is hard. I don't think that's true. I believe that the Christian life is impossible. And the disciples in our lesson today uh, are going to learn that lesson. We're in John chapter 15. And uh, if they didn't realize how impossible it was to live without Christ, they were about to find that out. Uh, the setting is Jesus has just had the last supper with his disciples. They've sat and had their last meal and he has shared with them that he is going away. He's going back to the Father. And the disciples are, are troubled um, with that news. It's uh, something Jesus has been trying to say for a long time, but now it's really hit home. He is now going away. And they're thinking about, you know, his leaving, and uh, they're troubled. Leaving the upper room, they head to the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus is going to pray that last big prayer, and he had invited his disciples to come and pray with him. And on the way, they were uh, walking along and probably walked along into a vineyard uh, on the way to the, that place to pray. And Jesus takes this opportunity to paint a picture of what life was going to be after his departure. And he says in John 15, I am the vine, you are the branches, for if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I am the vine and you are the branches. And he's probably showing them, and actually this illustration while they're looking at these, uh, this, this vine and branch, and he's explaining these ideas to them. 
Well, I don't believe the, the dis disciples were thinking about fruit. What was really on their minds was the, uh, the remaining with Jesus. This relationship of that they had left all to be with Jesus was now coming to an end. There was in their mind, we will do anything to stay in this relationship with Jesus. Not knowing that in the next 24 hours, they would all scatter. The disciple number uh, of the 12, uh, Judas, had already been identified as one who was going to betray Jesus. And the disciples, as Jesus was praying and asking them to pray with him, they were, had fallen asleep. And Peter, uh, when the soldiers came to take Jesus, he picked up a sword and tried to take off a man's head. And Jesus says, I am the true vine. I am your source of life. And in these, this idea, he was declaring the gospel. The gospel was, I have been doing what you're not able to do. I am able to do more in you than you've ever been able to do before. I am going to be able for you to be what you've never been able to be before. And I will make it possible that you will, pro will be able to produce fruit like you've never been able to produce before. See, when they were with Jesus, they could, uh, uh, they could do what they couldn't do on their own. When I think of, uh, of Peter, when he sees Jesus walking on the water, he jumps out of the boat and walks on the water. As soon as he took his eyes off Jesus, though, he began to sink. Uh, they saw uh, God do miracles through Jesus, and they, and they experienced miracles with Jesus. But now that Jesus was alone, uh, on his own, and they were alone, they were unable to. Just think of that 24 hours that Jesus is, is gone. What Jesus wanted them to understand is the vine. He says, as, in, as all followers, I have a secure relationship with Jesus. He wanted them to know that no matter what they did as his disciples, they were in a relationship with Jesus that was connected to the vine if they would continue to remain in him. And, that he, and they would enjoy the benefits of the Father. Jesus has just talked about in chapter 14, the Father, who they have uh, seen in the Father doing everything that he did through Jesus. And now um, he's learning, uh, that he's challenging them to, to enjoy those benefits and receive all that you will need in the Holy Spirit that I had promised that is coming. And so this is what he is challenging them to believe. This is what he wants them to understand in this illustration of the vine, the branch, and fruit. He says, I am the vine, and in verse 1, I am the vine, and there is a father. My father is the gardener, the vine dresser, and he is a good father. He is a father who loves for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He's a, he's a God who protects. He's a God who provides. I mean, if you, if you read the story of the Father throughout history, through the books of the, of, of the Bible, you will see a faithful, joy-providing, peace-giving, patient Father. And he talks about how this father, this who is now the master gardener of the vineyard, how he is tending the, brand, the vine. Every branch in me, I want you to think about that in me. Every branch that is in me is someone who has a uh, relationship with, with Christ. If you have not placed your faith in Jesus Christ, if he is not... Uh, somebody that you are uh, uh, inviting to be in relationship with, you are not in the vine. 
And he's talking about somebody that is in relationship with him. This is not a passage that's talking about uh, somebody who is coming to salvation. These are people who are already in that relationship with him. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes that it may bear forth more fruit. I want to focus on that idea of takes away. Uh, there have been uh, much debate about how, how this, uh, that, that word, which there is a Greek word, um, irio, that has two meanings. It could be take away or it could be lift up. And uh, in the in the uh, as you as you look at how the um, this verse takes place, um, every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he either takes away or lifts up. Either one of those words could be used. I would suggest that because they're in me. And the way you decide which word is based on the context of that word. And I would say that, uh, and agree with those scholars, Bible scholars, who would say lifts up would be a better usage because he is talking about bearing more fruit. If you take it away, that you're not going to bear more fruit. If you lift up, you would. Uh, the idea of lift up is in a vineyard, you would have branches that have fallen off the tr uh, the uh, the trellis and have, are laying on the ground. If it does produce fruit, it's rotting. And the, the master gardener comes along and lifts up so that it can bear more fruit. And so uh, I think of uh, people who are followers of Jesus and they just get stuck they're not necessarily bearing fruit, but they're still connected to the vine, but they're just stuck. And I believe in that place that the Holy Spirit is at work trying to draw you back in. And I would say the most miserable place for anybody to be is somebody who is, has Christ in them and they are, uh, and they are, are uh, disobedient and, and doing their own thing and walking away because you have the Holy Spirit that is that is the convictor. The Holy Spirit is the one who challenges you and brings you back into a place where you will bear fruit. There's also in this verse a pruning. I can remember um, when I was 25 years old and we had uh, our very first child. Uh, the challenge that we had was that he was three months early at two pounds, two ounces. And um, we, had, we had a preemie. I didn't even know what a preemie was. I was that ignorant. And I remember as I left the hospital every day and went back for months, um, watching him going up and down, not knowing if he was going to make it or not, I can remember asking God, what did I do wrong? Why is it, what did I, what sin did I do that my son was born early? And God um, was patient with me. And I came across a passage in the Gospels where there was a, a young boy that was born blind. And it, the question came to Jesus, why was this young, young man born blind? Was it a sin of his parents or was it a sin of the boy? And Jesus said, neither. It was so that my father might be glorified. And that was my first real learning that there are challenges that come into our life as branches on a vine that get pruned back, not for the, the, the reason that I have done something wrong, but it's it's an opportunity for me to grow. And that was such a strong growth season in my life, as well as other prunings that have come along. But there is 
all of, for all of us, there are difficult times that come. And I've learned not the first question to ask is, what did I do wrong? I'm asking God, is this a pruning season? Is there something you're wanting to teach me? I also go back, is there something that I've done <laughs> that I have maybe brought this upon myself? But I, I want us to understand that pruning is just part of being on the vine. And it's the greatest opportunity for God to be glorified and for us to grow. And so I am the vine, Jesus says, you are the branch. And uh, he wants us to bear more fruit. There's some benefits of, uh, of that. We'll get into it in a moment. But it says in verse 3 that you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. And I think that Jesus was, was realizing that in the hours to come, his disciples were going to be very disappointed with themselves um, as they were making some really bad choices and having attitudes and denying Jesus and, and questioning and doubting the resurrection and, and all that was going on. And Jesus was just telling them that the word I've spoken to you, you're clean. You're, you're still connected, even though you're doing some things that you will be disappointed in. He says, remain in me, as I also remain in you, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am in you, Jesus says. You are in me. We are securely connected. You're not able to bear fruit of yourself on your own. You can't take a branch that is not connected to a vine and stick it in the ground and it'll grow. It will not bear leaves and it will not bear fruit and it will have no life. You must remain in Jesus. We are the branches and the role that a branch is to play is to remain. I've thought about this passage so many times in my life um, one of my favorite uh, passages in Scripture, the vine and the branch, and as I've meditated upon it, um, I've thought about it in, in this way. Um, I, you know, that Jesus is that trunk, that, that uh, vine, and I am the branch. And what is that branch to do? It's, you know, um, I spent so much of my earlier journey trying to strive to, uh, to accomplish what needed to be done. And uh, I can remember if, if, if branches had eyeballs, I was focused on fruit and I would be um, often sad and disappointed because I just didn't feel like I ever quite produced much fruit. And I can remember a, a time in my life where Jesus said, get your eyes off the fruit. And the passage is really about abide means to keep focused, keep focused on what is uh, before you on the life and the source of life that comes from the vine. And uh, that, that Greek word for remain or abide is, uh, is, is minnow. And, it, it, and it, it's, been, it's used 40 times in the book of John. And it is used 10 times in eight verses. It's a very important concept for John who was the disciple who, um, who always referred to him. He never mentions his name in this gospel, but always says the disciple whom Jesus loved. But abide is a very important idea. And what it, what it means is to stay. It means to, uh, to hang out with. It means to be in a relationship with. That's, you know, so the branch is to stay. The branch is to hang on there. The branch is to be in relationship to. And it's a pretty simple idea, but we have a hard time coming to that because we're so busy trying to please God, trying to do things for God, trying to bear fruit. And God says, if you will just abide, if you will just 
remain, if you will stay, if you will just hang with me, if you will just be in relationship with me and have your eyes on the source, I will provoke fruit in you. I tried to come up with an illustration of what that might look like. And uh, I, I saw this uh, video about a dog trainer. And I think it paints a pretty good picture of what it means to abide. Meet Ginger. She was our rescue pup that we adopted, was a stray before we got to know her. So our first thing was to earn some trust, to teach her what it means to abide, to be in relationship, and to have a little bit of patience. So we taught her how to stay. That's something that a little foreign for us sometimes, to sit and to watch. You can see that she now doesn't let distractions be something she runs after. She doesn't let those things that come between her and me as her abide partner get in the way. When we're walking, she stays by my side. We started off being connected by a leash, but after so much work of being able to abide in one another, it doesn't matter where we turn, when we stop or how we go, she's always ready to abide, to stay, to remain, to walk alongside with. Notice that even though she might look away for a few seconds, she always has her eyes on what's going on as we abide in each other and have this partnership that is a beautiful way to show what it means to be connected, what it means to abide together. As you look at that video, what did you see? What, what kind of relationship did you see that dog trainer had with that stray dog that became trained? How did you see that pup learning how to stay? How did you see the obedience to the point where not even being distracted when that ball went out, when the boy was playing, he stayed. As you think about that video, what does that look like for you and your relationship with the Father, with your relationship with the vine, Jesus? Are you focused? Are you obedient? Are you staying in relationship and in the way that you respond? Are you even um, in a, are you, are you even in a point where you look at being in a relationship other than reading the Bible in order to know what to do? Are you in a living relationship? And I want to go back to this. As a follower of Jesus, if you're going to abide, it's important for you when being lifted up when being pruned, when going through life on a day-to-day -day basis to have a to, to believe in, in this and have a belief, a strong belief that I am in a secure relationship with Jesus, that I am enjoying the benefits of a good, good father and I am receiving all that I need from the Spirit. I am... Uh, I'm in a relationship with the Father when things, when the storms of life come, that this Father is all-knowing. This Father is all-powerful. And he is, he is overseeing the garden. He's overseeing life. He's overseeing the vineyard. And I'm in the vineyard attached to, the, to Jesus. And the spirit, the sap of life is coming in to me and going through me to the fruit. And there are benefits for abiding. It says, if you remain, if you abide in me, and my words remain and abide in you, you will ask whatever you wish, and it will be done. And again, this is not just, um, you know, hey, I want, you know, I can get whatever I want. It's the idea is if I'm abiding and I'm walking with uh, with God in such a way, in a relationship, and I'm listening, 
and I'm walking with, and I'm not walking ahead of, I'm not walking behind, I'm staying, then I, I can be trusted with what God would give me, that it wouldn't be selfish. I would be, uh, I would be asking for the things that he is wanting me to ask for. And I will see my prayers answered. Another benefit, it says, this is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. If I am abiding, the Father, the, the Master Gardener is glorified. If I am abiding, I am showing myself to be a follower, a disciple of Jesus. If I am abiding, if I am remaining, I am bearing much fruit. Well, what does fruit look like? Well, there are three characteristics of fruit. Fruit always takes on the characteristics of the vine. So whatever the fruit might be, it's going to take on the characteristics of the vine. Fruit is always visible. If, it, if it's on my property, the birds always get it before I do. And fruit always exists for the benefit of others. And the fruit is what we receive from the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And when I think of, of Jesus, I see uh, Jesus who loved his disciples. Jesus who always seemed to bring peace to those who were hurting and healing those who were in pain. He was a kindness. He was uh, gentle. He had, Jesus had self-control when the Pharisees came up against him and, and uh, brought all kinds of accusations. I, when I look at this list, I, I think of the Father. See, the Father who loves. The Father who, uh, who's patient. The Father who is faithful. And as fruit, we are to take on the characteristics of the vine. This is, this is what was true of Jesus. And Jesus said, what is true of me, I did nothing without going first to the Father. And, I, and if you saw what I did, you're seeing the heart of the Father. And Jesus provides a connection so that the Spirit of God would be able to go through us and that this would be the fruit of our life. I recently had the opportunity of leading a uh, someone to the Lord, and in the, the journey of him coming to faith, one of the challenges was that he would know that he was truly a believer, that he truly did have Christ in him, that he truly was connected to the vine. And uh, so I began to poke around a little bit and say, what are you understanding about, um, you know, are, are, you experiencing, are you experiencing more peace than you were before? And as we began to talk, he said, well, I think I am. I think I am. And, and over a period of time, he's, he finally came to the place. He said, you know, I, I'm experiencing peace. And I said, well, that's one of the evidences that you're connected. And it's one of, the, it's one of many fruits that you will, you will receive. And uh, just a week ago, we were talking, and he was talking about uh, a situation that happened in his neighborhood. And he had a, uh, a neighbor come in to, uh, into his yard and there was something that uh, he was uh, upset about and he kind of laid into uh, to my friend and uh, you know my friend kind of stepped back and he said he told me so I, I was really surprised at how I responded he said normally I would have just given it back and I would have been still angry today and just really uh, 
really upset and he would have known it. But he said, I, I was quiet and I just kind of let him go and, and after me and I, he said, I don't know what happened to me, but I just did not jump back at him. And I, I opened up to Galatians chapter five where it has the fruit of the spirits here. And I said, let's talk through that. What, what did you, um, instead of your anger and getting back, what did you see in your life? What was the spirit producing in you? And he said, well, self-control. And I said, yeah, and I see patience. And there was some, maybe some goodness. But the Spirit of God is wanting to bring this out in fruit in your life. When you think about your home, is this the characteristic of your home where where people are coming in, they're feeling loved, and there's so much joy when we're all together, and there's peace when there's, when there's conflict. We, we quickly figure out how to come back and resolve that conflict so there's peace, and, and we're patient with one another, and we're kind, and we're good, and we're, and, and we're faithful, and we're honest, and we, when we say something, we're gonna, it's the truth, and, and we don't let uh, things go on and... On a, on, uh, without solving them, and, and we're gentle, and when we, uh, when we lose our cool, we, we repent of that, and, but we have self-control, so we're not always exploding and, un, and have all of this unresolved life. And I'm afraid to say that this is not often the picture of what it means to be in a family, and this is really what God has said. You have been given I think of the, the world that I wake up to every day and the changes and the, the difficulties and the godlessness and the wickedness that I see and my heart breaks on one hand and I get so angry on the other hand and I just want to take somebody's head off. And then I'm reminded that I am too loved. I am to be gentle, I am to be kind, I'm to be patient, and I'm wrestling with what I wanted to see and what is what I might think is righteous indignation to accomplish and to solve this. And I'm reminded of my mission. My mission is to live my life before others that they would be attracted by my fruit and want to take my fruit, and, 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 ha- and enjoy the fruit that I bring. And I see a contrast. On, on one hand, this righteous indignation leads me to, to, to rise up like the Pharisees who were followers of God, and when they saw Jesus, who is God in the flesh, and they were ignoring that, and they were so angry that they killed him. And Jesus, who demonstrated this that took him to the cross and how it benefited the world. Abide. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I will release to the campuses. Love you guys. God bless you. Well, thanks for staying with us and being a part of our service today. And as we walk through some just the final steps uh, of the uh, transformational moment, I just want to draw you back to that, that statement that I have a secure relationship with Jesus, enjoying all the benefits of the Father, receiving all I need today from the Spirit. Is that true? Do you, have you placed your faith in Jesus? Have you invited him? If not, today would be a great day to get connected into the vine. But if you're a follower of Jesus, I would, uh, I would remind you that you are in this relationship. It's secure. And that you... Uh, can enjoy this faithful 
loving, patient, all-powerful Father, and that you can receive all that the Spirit has for you to live in you, to work through you. And the question I have for you, what would, it be, what would be different if you really believed this? How would that change your life? How would that change your day? How would that change your perspective? If you really believe that, if you're weighted down with worry, if you're weighted down with fear, if you're overcome with don't know what to do, I don't know how to pay the bills, I don't know how to handle the health crisis I've just discovered. Those three statements, do they bring you hope? If you really believe those to be true, would you find that in your abiding with Christ that you would find love and joy and peace in your journey? I pray that it would. I know this is an important thought for me as I come into challenging times, reminding myself of my connection to that vine and abiding, staying, trusting, and allowing the Spirit to work through me is very, very important. God bless you.